Welcome back to the treehouse, everybody. I've got a hide tanning home vlog for you today. Here at the Rackley Roost, let's check on them. Let's see how they're doing. Ready for this? Come here, Colonel. Yeah, get you some of that. There you go. These should be laying eggs any day now. Old Colonel, taming him, taming him down. Cause he's getting those uh, those claws in the back, whatever you call those. Those big uh, those big raptor nodules. I want him to play nice. All right, there you go. Chickens have been checked. Oh yeah. All right, so today's video is kind of like a post-harvest vlog because it kind of shows what goes on after the hunt. So back from deer camp here at the house, and I broke down the gear, the deer. Before we get into uh, doing the hide process, just want to say all you guys that commented on my trad bow harvest video about you hit the artery, you hit the artery on my shot. Yes, you are 100% correct. Uh, there was a lot that, that happened in there, and I think some of it happened while the deer took off after the shot, running around, and that thing just sloshing around in there. Not good. Um, but the artery shot got so lucky with that, and you guys are 100% correct. So it would have taken a very, very long time for that deer to expire with just that very back nicked lung. So, um, so anyway. Got lucky, and you guys are right. Just wanted to point that out. I took the quarters to a processor to get burger meat made, but back straps, heart, um, tendies, of course, that stuff. Take that home right away. Cook it up. Fantastic. Uh, you don't have to have one of these. You could literally just use like a post, like if you want to take a log and put it up against a tree, do it that way. You can, but. I went ahead, I had some scrap wood laying around. I was literally gonna throw it out anyways. So I just built a little beam. This is all it is. Looks like an ironing board. Um, put it on a four by four and a old piece of, uh, it's like a railroad tie, like a small railroad tie or something, I don't know. It's just something I had laying around. And you basically just lay this on here and you scrape all of the meat and fat off the hide so it's kind of a tedious process but it took me about an hour and a half to do that i kept the hide in a cooler basically on ice for you know about seven days basically and it was fine so i never even froze it um got one little spot where the hair was coming off so after we flushed it i strung it up on this old clothes rack i know it doesn't look as cool as a wood frame. I'm definitely going to build one at the lease. Have a little program to do this out there. And I was going to brain tan this, but I'm going to wait to do that at the lease. It's pretty messy. So this one, I'm just going to do a solution. I strung this up wet and let it dry for 24 hours. I put salt on it, just let it completely dry out. And then I hit this with a wire brush and a skinning knife. If you guys aren't familiar with wire brush, I use these on a lot of wood projects just to clean stuff up and take that and just basically rip down this thing and uh, get it to where the hide starts showing that white. Like this, this feels actually soft to the touch. In any place that feels hard like that, you know, you can almost hear it. it just sounds like it's plastic. You hit it with that wire brush and break it up and it seems to make it softer. And then I just went through with, uh, with a knife and just scraped down it.
I'm basically just trying to get all the oils off the hair right here. Hopefully that'll turn out better when it's done. So now that I've cleaned the hair side and the flesh side uh, and rehydrated it, uh, we're going to let that drip dry for about 10 minutes just until it's damp. And then I'm going to add this stuff right here. I got this off Amazon. This is new tan. So again, I was going to use the brains, the brain tanning method. You could also use eggs, but uh, this stuff right here, there's a, there's a lot of directions. You know, there's a whole, it's a big, shebang here salting rehydrating pickling uh this is like a week-long process it seems like so i'm kind of skipping a lot of these steps and you know do, doing it my own way stringing it stringing it up but uh i like the wire brush technique i'm very curious to see how soft this thing is going to be after just 24 hours sitting in this okay so I'm going to do this in the garage where it's a little cooler. I think uh, the directions say optimal is like in the 50s or 60s. You know, started the morning off at like 80 here. Glad we're not hunting right now. Next cold front though, should get the big bucks moving. And I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to say about 8 ounces of this stuff. I think this is 32 ounces. So at this point, the hide is just damp. And uh, I had to go through, this is something that a lot of people don't have to do, but if you deer hunt in Texas, we get cactus thorns in our deer. So I had to pick those out. So I'm not driving them into my hand right now. I'm tanning our deer hide, Amy. You, know, you told me that you wanted a deer hide, mm -hmm. and I, I brought you home one. Well, you're welcome. Okay, I gotta go help my mom. Alright. Smells really good. It has like a citrus scent to it. This reminds me if you just like were to smash up a banana. It's kind of what it feels like. Okay, I extensively massage. Uh, just under a quarter of the bottle on there. It's not a very big deer, so... Didn't need that much. Now I'm going to cover it with a tarp just because I don't want to fold it over on itself. I want to keep it strung up. We're going to let that marinate. I accomplished my big goal getting the deer with the self bow, but as soon as I got home, Ah, uh, I just had to start making another one, guys. I'm, I'm obsessed with it. This one's pretty neat because it is the uh, essentially the brother of the bow that I got the deer with. It's out of the same log, same piece of wood, but uh, there wasn't much in the handle section, so I decided to make this just a bend through the handle bow. I kind of screwed up on the last bow by not falling the grain as good as I should have, so this bow's got a real snaky grain in it. Makes it kind of neat, a lot of character. I gotta start tillering it today. So I'm gonna tiller it a little bit and just see uh, what it's gonna look like. It may not be that great, I don't know, but it looks sort of cool. And I thought with that little snake right there in the handle, that'd be a good spot to just put your arrow right above the wrap, be a good little rest. stout little bow right now. Oh. 
Okay, that's, that's pretty wonky. There we go. Now it's starting to bend right there. All right, guys, that is a pretty even bend, but it's a, it's been through the handle, so it's weird. That's braced quite high. That's 52 pounds right there at 27. So that's pretty much my draw length. The arrow, the, the side the arrow wants to sit on is actually a little opposite of what I wanted, but uh, I'm gonna put an arrow in here, try to shoot it, see what happens. Okay, I got a few different spines of arrows, so we'll see which one it likes. It's quiet. It's quiet. I don't know what to think about it. This is awesome because I built a set of arrows before I even had a bow, just didn't know what I was doing. And uh, I haven't had a bow that likes that arrow yet, so this is the first bow that I've had that likes these arrows. That took me so long to build. We're going to let that hide sit overnight. We'll come back to it in the morning, see how it's doing. Moment of truth. It's time to check and see what we got going on under here, under the hood. Ooh, got a little hitchhiker there. Hmm, I can still smell that orangey zestiness. Let's feel it though. This was the fattiest spot right here. Oh man, I can definitely feel that it softened up quite a bit. Don't have that same drumming sound that I had before. Man, even the rump right there, that's pretty good. Eh, the tail really didn't soften up too much, but I didn't break that down that well. Pretty darn good. It's still still got some moistness in it, so this is probably going to stiffen up quite a bit more. But man, I'm impressed. Like, look at that. We're not having like real stiff hard spots. This is good. Okay, I'm going to stand this up and let this dry out a little more. So I've had the hide upright, uncovered, drying for a few hours, and it's still just a little bit damp. Um, it says to let it dry for 48 hours on the instructions, and then to sort of work it while it's drying, which totally makes sense to me. So it's already stretched out. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut it, and then as it's drying over the next you know day or so, I'm just gonna work it um, working on the edges of things and just try to break the skin as, as much as possible. Okay, that my friends is a deer rug. Look how supple that is already. That is softer than I was expecting. It's crinkling, folding up very nice. Look at that, wow. Oh, we got one more little cactus thorn in there, I feel it. The goal is to get the flesh white, from what I understand. It means you're breaking apart the fibers.
OSG has made a fall harvest stew. And what have you elected to put in here? Hmm. Well, it all started with, I didn't have russet potatoes, so I used sweet potatoes. And then I just went with it. Sweet potatoes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sweet we potatoes? Peas? No. Is that fall harvest? I think that's more of a summer thing. Sweet potatoes, wild rice. <laughs> Of course, you got your tomatoes. Um, I put some mushrooms in there. It's like a lot of things that you wouldn't expect for a stew, but it's okay. actually delicious. Okay. And then I topped it off with some pumpkin seeds. It's delicious. Okay. And of course, we have the back scraps yes, in there. Yes, of course. How is, the, how is the tenderness? It's good. I mean, I cooked it all day yesterday, and then it sat in the fridge all night, and then I pulled it out and stewed it again, so it's, it's fall apart. This is one of my favorite deer. Uh, you know, deer meat can sometimes get a little dry, a little tough. I try to never overcook it, but it seems like you can't go wrong when it's in a stew, something juicy. Oh, that's just fall apart. Oh my gosh, honey. That is melting your mouth. Mm -hmm. In addition to the stew, OSG has made cinnamon sprinkled fresh apple donuts. Little pieces of fresh apple in there. A mighty fine dessert. It was gonna go good. Gonna go good with some coffee in the morning. Mmm. Thank you, Lord, for sending me that woman. These are antlers off the deer, by the way. Pretty cool. The hide is feeling awesome, guys. It really is. That uh, new tan, apparently that stuff is great. Uh, it, does, it does say on there, you know, the, the hide tanning is only as good as like the work you put into it. So it's kind of a disclaimer on there. So I would say, um, you know, working Working to break the hide is probably like the most important part to really getting something soft that, you know, I'm going to throw this on the back of my, my couch, chair, or, you know, whatever Stephanie wants to do with it. She said she wanted to hide. So uh, I'll give you guys an update on, uh, on the gram whenever this thing fully dries out, but um, I can tell you it's, it's probably going to be pretty darn soft. So I'm impressed with that new tan stuff, and I will definitely be keeping more hides if you guys want to see the brain tan too i'm going to try that next so subscribe to the channel next deer that i get uh we'll be doing a uh, a brain tan on that unless it's like a giant whitetail and i'm going to get it shoulder mounted or something but most likely not this year guys i'm just uh trying to do a lot of hunting with the bow um and really just doing everything i can to make the most of all the animals that i get you know use all the resources so um, the tendons off of this deer are also going to be used for backing a bow uh, and I'm using the scraps of rawhide that are left from the cutout. I'm shaving the hair off and I'm going to use that as handle material because it's already tan, it's already soft. I'll use that as handle material to wrap uh, my next bow, maybe the bow that I just made. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned for more outdoor action right here and I'll see you guys on the next one.